Tiffany Tips here. Guess who I have with me today? I have Chris. Chris is a lawyer. So he's going to sit here and tell us a little bit about himself and share um, his career with you. Chris, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? And thank you so much for being on Tiffany's Tips. Thank you, Tiffany, for having me. Um, like Tiffany mentioned, I am an attorney licensed in New York, New Jersey. Um, I practice real estate, um, residential and commercial, estate planning, wills, trust and estates, personal injury, and family law. I've been licensed for 18 years, mm -hmm. since 2005. Um, and I've just been, you know, just working hard. I started out at a big firm in New York City. I worked at a mid-sized firm. I worked for a solo practitioner. And probably in 2014, I branched out and started my own practice. Anything that you've heard on this podcast is not legal advice. There's no attorney-client relationship established from what you've heard today. Um, you should definitely contact your local attorney in your area for any legal advice. What inspired you to become a lawyer? And do you have any tips for those who are who desire to become a lawyer? Well, unlike a lot of people, I kind of worked from the bottom of the law um, profession to before I became an attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in the field since I was 15 years old. Right. I worked as a file clerk um, at a law firm, Paulus Merman & Associates in Brooklyn. Uh, the firm was located down the street from my high school. So at 15 years old, after school in the summers, I would work, I would work, for, work with them. Um, and it was a personal injury firm. And at that firm, um, I found myself uh, reading the depositions and wow. just being interested in everything they that they did. Um, uh, one of the partners, Paul Merman, he took me to court one day. I was carrying his bags, following him around, and it was probably the best day of my life at that, mm -hmm. at that age. Mm -hmm. You know, just getting that experience and that exposure at a young age. Um, so, but even before then, ever since I was like eight, nine years old, I said I wanted to be a lawyer and a baseball player. The baseball thing didn't work out, but the lawyer did. Wow, proud of you. You know, we have to push out children. At 15, you weren't sitting home playing Atari. You was working at a law firm office. So, you know, listen, you're inspiring and helping parents on what to do with their children. I, my next question is, well, what kind of cases or does your practice handle? Or do you have any tips, you know, for each category of okay. law that you practice? I practice real estate. Um, kind of real estate um, closings, so pretty much from contract to closing, residential and commercial. So once you have find a house, uh, you make an offer and the offer is accepted. I'm the lawyer that would um, get you through attorney review, make sure to you know, protect your interests um, regarding that contract. I will uh, order title for you, uh, make sure the title is clear and that you're actually buying a house and that the seller actually owns the house. That's if, that's if you're the buyer, if you're the seller, I'm also doing the same thing on the seller side. Um, I accompany you to the, con to the, to the closing, mm -hmm. um, sign all the documents, go over all the numbers with you, and get you to closing. So I'm from contract to closing, uh, residential and commercial uh, real estate. Also handle personal injury. Uh, that's you know, car accidents, slip and falls. Okay. Um, one tip I can give you, if you're ever in an accident, I think it's very important for you to go to the hospital, get medical attention as soon as possible. Because if you think about it from the defense side, um, they're going. if you wait weeks or days or months to go to the hospital, they're going to, their, their argument is that if you were really hurt, why didn't you go straight to the hospital? Why did you take so long to go to the hospital? Personal injury, family law, I also do custody cases. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's my most recent area of practice that I started, maybe within a year ago, a year or so ago, because I had to handle my own uh, custody case okay. um, recently. And then I also do wills, trusts, and estates. I think everybody at the bare minimum should have a will, a living will, um, and a healthcare proxy. Uh, because we accumulate assets in life and we don't want um, our family members or friends fighting over stuff uh, when we're gone. So we want to outline that in a document and that's called a last will and testament. Well, thank you for your breakdown and your tips. Um, where are you located and how can people get in contact with you? Well, my office is located in Tenafly, New Jersey. Uh, my phone number is 201-648-5210. Address is 19 Phelps Avenue in Tenafly, New Jersey. If you need a lawyer, Chris is the lawyer. Um, now, as they come in and see you, what is the process when seeking a lawyer? Like, consult do they go through consultation? You know, what is the process? Well, some areas of law, you're not allowed to um, charge a consultation, like okay. personal injury. Um, you're not allowed to charge a consultation. But other areas, um, like maybe a state plan, I do charge a small consultation fee. Um, but as far as seeking an attorney, you should definitely do your due diligence. Definitely research, research the name, make sure they don't have any mis um, prior misconduct um, against them, uh, make sure they're um, 
expertise is in the area that you're seeking. Um, and just make sure that they're honest and they, they work with integrity and then they're just not in it for, you know, for the money. Thank you, Chris. Um, can you inform us about the state to state laws and, you know, certain lawyers that may not be able, that may be able to cover a metro area, but may not be able to cover, you know, um, South Carolina. Um, can you provide information for that? Yes. Um, when you take the bar exam, you usually take it um, state specific. So in my in my case, um, I took the New York and the New Jersey bar exam at the same time. Um, wow. So when you take the New York bar exam, you take and you pass it and you pass character and fitness. You're licensed in New York. You can't handle a case um, in Florida or South Carolina, North Carolina, unless you uh, file a motion called a Pro Hoc Vice motion. And what that is is you have to find an attorney that's licensed in that state, and you kind of piggyback on their license for that specific case. And that, that attorney supervises you for that specific case. Once that case is over, then that's it. If you want to do another case in another state, you have to do another pro hoc vitae motion or take the bar exam uh, for that state. There's certain states you can waive into automatically uh, without taking the bar. And, that, and D.C. is one of them. I waived into D.C. Okay. Um, so I'm also licensed in D.C. Um, but I, no, I don't do any work down there. But, okay. um, <laughs> Um, you might now. But, I, I mean, I'm available to do work in D.C., but I just haven't. Uh, but I do have the license. So, yes, it's very case-specific. Um, you have to, you know, pass the bar and, get, and, and pass character and fitness um, to practice in each state. Well, thank you for that information. Now, Chris, you are definitely a girl dad. You're an amazing single father um, that is not only, you know, we I admire and have watched your journey, but you are... You have, you have such a village supporting you and so many people are proud of you. Do you have any advice for either single parents or especially single dads? Uh, well, I can speak to single dads. Um, I mean, you just have to be present with your children. Mm -hmm. No matter what your relationship is with the mom or the other parent, um, you just have to be present with your children, make them a priority. Um, and it doesn't cost a whole lot of money to be present. You know, with my daughter, I do a lot of different things with her. Yes. But I think what she appreciates the most sometimes is just watching TV, just watching Netflix, Netflix and chill on a Friday. You know, she gets a kick out of that, especially when I fall asleep. She teases me the next day and be like, Daddy, you fell asleep during the movie? <laughs> and, but she gets a kick out of it. So, like, uh, it doesn't it doesn't cost a lot of money to, to be present with your children, necessarily. Um, and again, like, you know, a lot of fathers come up to me and they say, oh, I, I, can't, I can't deal with my my child's mother, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm not in the life. I mean, that's no excuse. I mean, it's not a it's focus on the child. The right. child, the, the, the standard is always the best interest of the child. Um, no matter what the other parent does, you have to focus on that child. I always say, you know, the other parent could spin on their head in Times Square for all I care. I'm, I'm going to focus on, you know, my child. So that's the, that's my advice. I, you know, you guys like me with the spin on your head in Times Square. That's the Brooklyn coming out. That's the Brooklyn coming out. Um, Chris, listen, this was so informative. You know, you are an amazing lawyer. You're an amazing girl dad. I'm out of picture. But, you know, everyone, I'm going to leave his information. Reach out to Chris if you have any questions. And thank you again for being thank on you. Tiffany's Tips. Brooklyn is in, in the, the house. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone have a blessed day. You no know, we day. stay loving Jesus. Yes. Remain encouraged. And I hope that this tip helped you on Tiffany's tips. Thanks, thanks again, Chris. Thanks for having me, Tiffany.